Giants added some hardware to their collection yesterday. And there wasn't one player more grateful than Tim Hudson. The veteran right-hander waited 16 seasons before finally becoming a world champion. Now, Hudson takes the mound in the final game of the series. It's the Giants and D-backs, and it's all coming up next. Day baseball here at AT&T Park. It's a beautiful Sunday afternoon. Our fans filing in for the final game of this four game series. Diamondbacks and Giants. Hi again, everybody. I'm Dwayne Kuyper. Alongside me is Mike Kruko. Well, today is known as the day after the ring ceremony. So that means back to business and Tim Hudson's on the mound. Well, and when Tim, Tim Hudson gets on the mound, he always is business. And we expect him to do that very thing. Go out there, give his team a chance to win. Now, an enormous weight has been lifted from this team's shoulders in yesterday's win, ending the eight-game losing streak. And now it's all about relax. It's a regular game. And do what you do, and that is score runs and keep the line moving. That'll be the key today. And uh, hopefully they can uh, salvage another win. Belt is in left. Posey's at first base. Susak behind the dish. Should be fun this afternoon. All right, when we come back, we will have the lineups in the first pitch of this game right after this. and Giants in the final game of this series. Our game time weather is presented by the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. The admission is free. Visit online for park hours at beachboardwalk.com. 63 degrees here at the yards. You see the winds at 10 miles per hour. Humidity at 74% and it's sunny. Here's the lineup that Hudson will be facing. It'll be Inciarte to lead things off followed by Pollock. Who's had a great series? Then it's Goldschmidt, Trumbo, and Hill. Sixth is Jordan Pacheco, owing seventh. Nick Ahmed in the A spot, and Hellickson will pitch in bat night. On the Hill today for the Giants will be the veteran Tim Hudson, 6'175 pounder. Hudson, 39 years of age, in his 16th year at the big league level. 
and this is what he has done in two starts. He's throwing the ball great. He is still looking for a run to be scored in his support. Giants have not done that yet. And the first pitch of the ball game is a call strike. Hudson, you're going to get a fastball. He'll sink. He'll cut. Curveball. He'll throw a slider, a changeup, and a split. Enciarte in this series is four for 15, and he took an 0 for 4 last night against Heston. On deck is Pollock, and at third is McGee. And this is bounce to Joe Panic, most supposedly getting back to first, and that's how this game gets started. Let's take a look at that defense behind Hudson today, starting in the outfield for the Giants. Brandon Belt in left field, making his first start of the year, joined by Pagan and Aoki. Crawford McGee will be on the left side of the infield. Panic and Posey on that right side. Andrew Susak getting his first start of the year behind the plate in the squad, putting down the signs. So here's Pollock hitting at 325. He's got a home run. He's got six driven in. His home run was hit in this series off of Santiago Casilla on Thursday. He's had a good series. He's six for 12 in this series. And he shoots this one up the middle, and that's going to be a base hit. Giants playing him to pull, and he simply hits it away from the defense. Seen that a lot. Challenge fastball up around the belt. Pollock goes right back up the middle. It gets a little jammed with it. I don't know. Even if they play straightaway defense, they can get that. The infield is playing very quick these days. Quicker than we've seen in the last several years. Here's Goldschmidt. And a quick toss. And getting back easily is Pollock. A lot of wind today. Fly balls and pop ups will be an adventure. Wind is gusting and swirling. Not an easy day to be an outfielder, especially if you're playing left field for the first time, like Brandon Belt. Goldschmidt. Pretty good numbers off of just about anybody he faces. Off of Hudson, he's 5 for 18 with four doubles. And the runner goes, and this is skied to left and hit well. Belt back, it is gone. And just like that, it's 2 nothing. His fifth of the year. So dangerous. So quick with the bat, so powerful. Sabian calls it bat strength, and this is one of the strongest bats in all the National League. They set up in the outside corner. This thing comes back across the plate, middle in, die high, and that is his kill zone. He does not miss that pitch inside. So here's Trumbo. Trumbo takes a strike. Just coming right back in the kill zone. You can see the glove from Posey roll over outside the shin guard to that inside part of the plate. Susak, I beg your pardon, Andrew Susak doing the catching today. Posey is at first base. Trumbo two for eight lifetime against Hudson with a home run. One and two. I guess you can make mistakes against some people, but there are certain guys that just they don't pass. Well, they go are, right to go. Those are the premier players in the league. Angel Pagan moving over. Two outs. You know, we, we saw that firsthand when, when Barry Bonds was in his prime. There were nights when he would get one pitch in all four at bats or five at bats. He'd get one pitch and he did not ever miss it. 
That was the most remarkable thing about him. Here's Aaron Hill with nobody on and two outs. And Hudson starts him off with a strike. The home run allowed by Hudson is first of the year in 13 plus innings. This is roll foul, nothing in two. He'll beat the Giants the other night in the 12th inning with a hit off of Sergio Romo. This is bounced to Crawford who gets to it and he throws him out and that'll end the inning. Goldsmith puts the D-backs on the board. Giants are coming up. Brought to you by Jack in the Box. Jack's hottest sandwich is back. Head to Jack in the Box for Jack's Blazing Chicken Sandwich. By Toyota, number one in MPG, durability and resale value. Toyota, let's go places. And by DraftKings.com. Play daily fantasy baseball for free on DraftKings.com with the official daily fantasy partner of Major League Baseball. Enter promo code ORANGE for free entry. The Goldschmidt home run, 2 nothing D backs. Here's the Giants lineup. It'll be Aoki to lead things off, followed by Joe Panic, who's got the magic one do going right now. It'll be Pagan, Posey, and Belt. McGee will hit six, Susak seventh. Crawford a home run yesterday. He's in the A spot and Hudson ninth. On the hill today for the Arizona Diamondbacks will be the right hander Jeremy Hellickson. He's in his fifth year at the big league level. Hellickson, 27 years old, 6 190 pounder, and this is what he has done. In two starts has not gotten off to a great start. It's his first season with the Diamondbacks coming over from the Tampa Bay Rays. You see a, a fastball around 90. He'll cut it. He'll sink it. He's got a curveball slider change up. He's got the whole spectrum and he will pitch away from the fastball a lot. So here's Aoki. Helixson a finesse guy. Who has to rely on command. And a strike. Okay, hitting 327 with one RBI. He is two for two lifetime against Hellickson. Just underway here at the corner of Third and King. Glad you joined us. Home plate umpire is Dan Asanya. And I think Asanya is basically a low ball umpire, but I think his corners can breathe. They can inhale some innings and they can exhale some innings. Down the right field line. Trumbo's going to get to it, and Oki's going to have a double. I love this guy. Let's take a look at the defense for the Diamondbacks, starting in the outfield from left to right. 
It'll be Enciarte, Pollock, and Trumbo, the best arm in left field. Ahmed and Hill on the left side of the infield. Owings and Goldschmidt on the right side. And Jordan Pacheco will be in the squad, putting down the signs. So here's Panic. Panic a three for five afternoon yesterday. And that has jacked his average up to 286. Well, like three or four days ago, he was under 200. And a shot up the middle and a base hit. Aoki was headed back to second. And now the Giants have runners at the corners with nobody out. Yeah, Aoki did what you're supposed to do on a line drive. You've got to freeze. That really is a great tip to uh, for young kids. Let's first of all, take a look at the swing of the bat with Panic going right back up the middle. You'll see him use that part of the field a lot. But look at Aoki freeze and go back to second base. And that's a great running tip. A line drive, you cannot get doubled up. I mean, that's good instinct. It did not allow him to score, however. But he absolutely executed perfectly as a base runner. So here's Angel Pagan. Pagan took a rare 0 for 4 yesterday. Now timeout is called. Not sure by whether it was Pacheco or Pagan or maybe Asanya just decided to call timeout. And a breaking ball is wide. One ball and no strikes. Cy Hellickson in Arizona, and we watched him try and use that breaking ball in the outside part of the plate to left-handed hitters a lot. He tries to backdoor it, the backdoor that curveball and his slider. Try and wrap it around the corner. Two balls and no strikes. Pagan. Face Tellickson in that game Mike's talking about and went 0 for 3. Yeah, I think the key with Hellickson is, is be patient. I mean, he is going to nibble. He's never really going to give in to you, but he is just going to nibble, nibble, nibble. He wants the hitter to be aggressive. Couldn't get it. 3 0. Posey. Three and oh to Angel Pagan. And a strike three and one. A lot of hitters want that umpire to call that pitch a strike. Yeah, they don't want to walk with a runner third lesson. Well, nobody out. They want to hit. Pagan waiting patiently. And now he finally asked for time. Okay, at third, panic at first. Three and one to Angel Pagan. So we're going to foul back. It's three and two. Now, those were the numbers that Hellickson had in that start April 8th against the Giants in Arizona. Nine hits at four and a third. I mean, he really danced a tightrope. To escape with just three runs allowed was kind of a miracle. They hit a lot of balls hard at people. He wasn't fooling anybody. Hit out into left center field. A long run for Enciarte. He's going to get there and make the catch. Tagging and scoring is Aoki, and the Giants are on the board. Nice at bat. That's what the situation called for. Fly ball deep enough to score the run from third, and he did it in a two strike count. No 
throws a little fastball outside corner. It's not a hanger. Knee high on the outside part. And Pagan just goes the other way, and he has to dig that one out. He goes down and gets it. See, it was a more impressive than at bat after you saw the replay. So here's Buster Posey. First pitch strike. Buster 0 for 2 lifetime against Hellickson. Had a couple of hits yesterday. Panic at first. One out. A run in. Out of play. Only two. Brendan Belt on deck. Lots of fog coming in today, but boy, once we hit noon, it started to clear up. Now it's a very sunny day. It's the coolest part about being on the east side of the city. You get more sunshine over here, over towards the coast on the west side. Good chance it's still foggy over there. Pelixson taking a lot of time. Get on the ground to third. Hill to second to first. Double play. And that'll end the inning. Giants are on the board. We will head to the second inning. 2 1 D bat. Rode the horse and it was awesome. Then the Madison Bumgarner Buster Posey Silver Slugger Awards on Tuesday. And then yesterday the Giants picked up their their jewelry. They picked up their world championship rings. And uh, other than the home record, it's been a great homestand. Here's Pacheco and a strike. It's a good picture. I hadn't seen that one before with the Team behind the Hall of Famer. Yeah, very cool. They're all wearing their rings. I mean, the players do not wear their rings a lot. A lot of them just put them away and say, "We'll wear them when it's all said and done." But not yesterday. They all had them on. Pacheco on the ground to Crawford, and Crawford to Posey. One out. Well, you can win a 2014 World Series Champions ring created by Tiffany and Company, identical to the rings given to players and coaches, and the ring will be personalized with your name. 
Purchase tickets at sfgiants.com slash ring raffle. Minimum purchase is 10 bucks, and all proceeds will benefit the Giants Community Fund and Junior Giants Baseball. Here's Chris Owings. Owings looks at a strike. There is. Well, that's not the version we got. That's a good one, but <laughs> the one we got is a little bit better. Pitch runs inside to Owings. Owings 0 for 4 lifetime against Tim Hudson. The 1 1 pitch. Tapped very high to McGee, who's going to have to hurry. And he throws it away. And Owings is going to head down to second, and he will make it. It will be an infield hit and an error on McGee. I think that's a generous hit. I think if he makes a good throw here, he's out by 10 feet. And you can see McGee off the right foot, just unloading high. There's not a whole lot that Buster Posey could do. And that's our Expo brought to you by your local Toyota dealer. So Owings now at second. Here's Nick Ahmed. Swing and a miss. Owen one. Another example of how it is a little harder in front of home plate. No balls in one strike. There's the area out in front of home plate that uh, it really you, know, you can make it soft, you can make it hard, you can do whatever you want with it if you're the home team. And Hudson runs that pitch inside at 87. One ball and one strike. Outfield straight away for Nick Ahmed. With Hellickson on deck. One and two. If you ever wonder what the mindset is of a pitcher after a, a, a player makes an error behind him, I mean, you, you get frustrated and you don't like to see errors, but that frustration lasts about four seconds. Then you simply identify the situation and pitch to it. I mean, that's it. And you take it as a personal challenge to pick up your teammate. I'm going to make sure that that error does not cost us or cost you the player that made the error. That's the mindset. Got him. Susak with the block and the throw to Posey. That's a case of a veteran pitcher taking advantage of a very young hitter. Well, he had count leverage ahead of him one two and he knew he could go down the dirt. And Ahmed could not hang. And lay off. Here's Hellickson, 0 for 3 on the season. And a breaking ball starts him off 0 and 1. He backs two Giants one Goldsmith a two run home run in the first. Pagana sacrifice fly in the first. Outfield very shallow. Especially Nori Aoki. My goodness. Aoki in right field today with Brandon Belt moving over to left. And you can see Pagan now favors the right center field side. That's where panic plays when Ryan Howard's hitting. <laughs> That's right. We see the second baseman out there quite a ways. Two sack will tag Hellickson so the air does not hurt Hudson. 
few more pitches. It'll be Belt to lead things off. area is brought to you by Casino Matrix, Silicon Valley's premier 24-7 entertainment destination. A 2-1 lead for the D-backs. Resting comfortably in the cold. I'm wondering what that guy's doing down the hatch. Taking a nap. Here's Belt to lead things off. Belt, McGee, and Susak facing Jeremy Hellickson. The Diamondbacks who put the shift on for Belt. Belt wraps one into right center field. Pollock will get to it. And just like that, Hellickson back in the stretch. Check in with Happy Amy G. All right, guys, fans have probably already noticed Bochi shaking up his defense today. He's got Buster at first, Aoki in right. Susak behind the dish and Belt in left. Now, why is Belt in left? Well, it gave him an opportunity to keep his bat in there. He liked what he saw from him yesterday, drawing a walk and beating the shift to hit a single. Of course, he just got another one right now. It also gives him a chance to have Susak's bat in there, guys. Yeah. It's an aggressive swing by Belt, something you like to see. And here's McGee. He's a dart thrower, isn't he? Yeah, that's how he has to try and beat you. He has to finesse the corners. Hellickson will give you five different types of movement. And he'll take speed off just about all of his pitches. Add and subtract. If he throws anything out in the middle, it's kind of a mistake. I mean, he really wants you to swing at that because that's a ground ball. Yeah. And he may throw the same spot here with the count two and zero, oh. or, or a curveball or slider or changeup. I mean, everything he has, he has confidence in to throw it two zero, oh, three two. Double play ball. Six four three. So McGee hits into the double play, and here's Susak. Susak had in a bat yesterday a pinch hit. 
and he was 0 for 1. But in the lineup today, hitting in the seventh spot, and maybe in the lineup for the next couple of days. Gets jammed. Ahmed broke in, and now it's just over his head. Susak with the magic wandu. So he gets his batting average going. Oh, and Ahmed came in on it. It's like, thank you very much. Giants back to the orange SF on their helmet. Little jam shot. There's that step in, and that cost Ahmed a chance to make that play. If he breaks back straight in the ball, I believe he makes that play. Absolutely. Ahmed is an outstanding defensive shortstop, and he has got wide range. And he's, he's had a good series defensively. Here's Crawford who hit a long home run yesterday. Goldsmith playing behind Susak. And that pitch is outside for a ball, 1 0. Home runs three RBI seven that leads the Giants. Nibble nibble. Here's our Togo's big play the Togo's way and the Crawford's two run home run off of Ruby De La Rosa. And it was a big big fly. It was the big blast in the game. Three and zero. Oh. Well, Hellickson continues to nibble. He knows he's got Tim Hudson on deck, and he knows what he saw yesterday that Crawford's hitting it pretty good. Left Earth yesterday. That'll make you nibble. And a strike. I feel very deep. This is like a no doubles defense right now. And the walk. And Brandon Crawford is one of those guys that he knows the rules down there. You're an eight hitter with pitcher on deck. You're supposed to expand your zone, but there are certain times that pitcher just won't let you. No. Hudson on the season is 0 for 4, but he'll give you a good at bat. Center field diving is Pollock and he makes the catch. And that'll end the inning. Nice at bat from Tim Hudson. Looked like it might fall, but Pollock puts it away. Third inning coming up.
service is celebrating 13 years and you can watch every out-of-market game live or on demand at true hd on over 400 mobile and connected devices go to mlb.tv for details this group is leading the league in fun a happy 60th it's ramona and she does not look 60. here's Inciarte. right back to hudson He's trying to slap that ball somewhere. Looks like he was trying to play pepper with Hudson. That's exactly what it looked like. Here's Pollock. And Pollock takes a strike. Well, he's got a nice feel with that slider today. It's very quick. And he is dotting the eye on the outside corner. Pollock is going to lift it into left field for a hit. Goldschmidt hit a home run on the first. But really one of the few location mistakes that Hudson has made today. They set this target on the outside corner. Watch it come back middle in. And Goldschmidt did not miss it. Home run number five on the year for him. Goldsmith a swing and a foul held on by Susak. He was trying to yank that one too. Hudson not going to let Goldsmith take away the fastball. Hudson knows that the fastball is is how he wants to beat him, but it doesn't want to make a mistake middle in above the thigh. It wasn't the pitch that did him in; it was the location. Swing and a miss. Nothing in two. Owen two to Goldschmidt. Down low, one and two. One and two at first is Pollock. And a quick toss, and Pollock is back. Pollock, good speed. Hudson in the one two pitch. Down low, two and two. Pollock again back in on the dive. Giants in the outfield really give the left field line to Goldschmidt. They know he uses the middle of the field, but there's a lot of room over here with Brandon Belt trying to cover the gap more than the line. Well, also give you an idea how they're trying to pitch him, too. Pitch him away, play him away defense. They know that Goldschmidt 
beat Hudson middle in last at bat. So this defense is basically telling Goldschmidt something that I guess he already knew that they're going to go away from him. 0 2 to 3 2. So Hudson has tried very carefully on three straight pitches. We'll see if Pollock takes off. Mike mentioned he does have good speed. And it would be likely that that would be the case. Three balls, two strikes. And he walked him, and he was not going to give in to, to Goldschmidt. Well, if he was going to miss, he was going to miss off the plate away. He was not going to miss middle in. Lifetime numbers are very good. So here's Trumbo. Trumbo hit a fly ball to center field in the first. And that pitch is down low. Panic is now playing. To the left side of second base. That would mean if there's a ground ball to Buster Posey, he's going to have to cover second. Also, it'd mean if there's a ground ball to McGee, it'll be a different angle for him going to second. So I'm going to miss one ball and one strike. So on the 1 0 count. Trumbo thinking aggressive thoughts goes out of the zone and chases that slider. Below the zone. Uh, can, can get that ground ball with the slider just as easily as he can get that ground ball with the sinker. Hit into center field, but it's right at Pagan. Pagan will make the catch. Two outs. And here's Hill. Hill is 0 for 1. He grounded out to Crawford. And he's another guy who likes that ball middle in. I mean, he's got the same hot zone that Goldschmidt has. I think Goldschmidt's a little bit better on the outer half of the plate, but Aaron Hill, very quick middle in. Got to be careful on that side of the plate. If you go inside the hill, you've got to get it up around the belt. You do not want to drop it mid thigh to the knee. Swing and a miss, no balls in one strike. Hudson trying to pitch through a Pollock single and a Goldschmidt walk. And that's down low, one ball and one strike. Fouls it to the backstop, one and two. So Hudson taking a little breather as he turns his back to home plate, rubs up the baseball. It's one ball and two strikes. Hudson takes a peek to second. And Hill watches this one low and away. Two and two. 41 pitches for Tim Hudson. Hellickson has had the. The luxury of two double play balls. 
Hudson has not. Two balls, two strikes. Now full count. You know, that's exactly what you want to do if you're going to go inside the hill. Make that thing above the hands with movement running in off the plate. Chase in a 3 2 count. And the runners will be on the move. Oh my. Hudson cannot believe it. Pochi cannot believe it. And Asanya saying that the pitch was up. And he likes the low ball, but I mean, this is one that everybody thought should have been a strike. Except Mr. Asanya. And in his eye, he thought it was high. So the inning continues and Hudson has to throw more pitches. It's 43 on the day, but this has been a long inning for him. So here's Pacheco. Pacheco 0 for 1, run it out to Crawford. Likes the first pitch. One ball and no strikes. Yeah, you see a, a fastball and a 3 2 count up there around the belt, and it really is a coin toss. A lot of umpires say, see you later. Asanya thought it was a bit high, but still to have the guts to take that pitch in that location. I think the only way that he did that was he, he got fooled. And guys with power, they will guess at two strikes. And I think that he'll guess wrong there. That's the only reason he took it. Two and oh, so now Hudson's got to come in. Same pitch there that was ball four to Aaron Hill. 20 pitches in the inning. And this is a big pitch. It is indeed. Bases are loaded with two outs. And he hit him. Dave are getting going to come out trying to calm the waters a bit. He has to understand that the Hudson's a bit frustrated for that ball four, but you know, you, you cannot dwell on what you didn't get. You got to move on. So I think we're going to come out and try and refocus the concentration of Hudson, calm the waters, get the anger level down a couple notches. And the only way you can really explain the last pitch is that it, it slipped out of his hand. Right. Because he's not the type of guy that will overthrow, especially in a 2-0 count. So here's Owings. Owings bounced one to McGee. A high hopper, and McGee threw it over the head of Buster Posey. He was credited with a single. Swing and a miss, 0 and 1. And that may have been the message from Dave Rigetti. Use all your pitches. You're using fastball slider, use that changeup. And he gets a first strike with it. I always thought that pitching coaches give you a three pitch plan when they come out. Tapped out in front of home plate, and it's going to kick foul. You know, something like, look, this guy's an aggressive hitter. Let's stay away from the fastball on the first pitch. After that, run sliders off the plate away. Let him, let him chase the ball out of the zone. Let him help you out. You know, something along those lines where all the distraction of the inning can dilute your concentration. And if you get a pitching coach out there to give you a little three-pitch plan, he can get right back in, get you right back into things mentally. And even guys that have been around for 16 years at the big league level, like Tim Hudson, every once in a while need to get refocused. That's a fair ball down the right field line. It's going to score two. 
And that's a big hit by Owens. And it's five to one. Well, big hit because it was a two strike count and an 0 2 count. And it's just a mistake. I mean, that much strike zone when you're way ahead of a hitter is not something you want to do. So, Owens, to his credit, in the protect mode, going the opposite way with the gift. And this is indeed a gift. Here's Nick Ahmed. And a strike to Ahmed. So two walks in the inning, both have scored. Oh, and one. Going to make a move to throw to third now. You cannot fake a throw. You've got to throw it. The old fake the third throw to first move is gone. Illegal. Thankfully. Just outside. One ball and one strike. Runner goes, swinging a bouncing ball foul, one and two. Ooh, ball dude, look out down there. Is that Tony Graham? Uh, let's watch what happens. Oh, it hits him. Whoa. That's not fair. Oh. It's not part of the deal, is it? I think it's Steve Yanaga. I think Tony Graham's over first base today. Posey, foul. So Ahmed back behind the dish. Long inning for Hudson. Yeah, it really has been. And two strike, two out hits to give up a couple of runs. I mean, they're. Bone crushers for a pitcher. I mean, you're one strike away from getting out of the inning, and you have to start all over with another hitter. With runs cashing in, it's it hurts you. And that pop up is out of play. Pacheco's at third. Owings is at first. Beautiful day at McCovey Cove. One ball, two strikes. And the runner goes again. And there'll be no throw. On the appeal, no swing. It'll be the second steal of the year for Owings. Hudson digging deep. 31st pitch of the inning coming up. And that'll end the inning. Well, the Giants know what they have to do. They got a lot of time to do it. It's 5 1 D backs.
see Sharon Robinson sitting next to Larry Bear. And prior to the game today, Sharon Robinson and Sean Dunstan met with students from Riverbank High School in Riverbank, California. And they were chosen as one of the finalists from over 16,000 essays nationwide. And a major component of the program is the Breaking Barriers Essay Contest. And it encourages children to write about barriers and obstacles that they have faced and are still facing in their lives. So Sharon Robinson here today at the ballpark. And here's Nori Aoki to lead things off. And he takes a strike. Aoki double to open up the bottom of the first inning. Panic and then Pagan. Hit up the middle, cut off by Helixson, one out. Well, check out the Warriors tomorrow night, game two, as they take on the Pelicans in their playoff series. You'll see it live on Comcast Sports in the Bay Area with Fitz, JB, and Roz. Coverage starts at 6.30 p.m. The authentic home of the Warriors playoffs is Comcast Sportsnet. Games 3, 4, 5, and 6, if necessary, will also be on CSN. There's a Warriors fan. Oh, yeah, lots of Warriors fans these days. I, don't, I think he slept in that from I don't yesterday. I think he's taken it off since the first game of the year. Panic takes a strike, and it's 0-1. On deck is Pagan. Inside one ball and one strike. In at third is Hill. And the one one to panic. Panic rolls it foul. Well, Joe Panic is our silver company electrifying play of the week. Panic's triple triples alley at the bottom of the ninth, but Ender and Ciarte couldn't track down, scoring Buster for Posey. They tied the game with the dieback. Down the backs four to four. And it fired up a lot of folks. Our silver company electrifying play of the week. One and two to Panic. Panic stays alive. Helixson breaking out the curveball this time through the lineup. It's a Pagan fan. And the one two to Panic. High and foul down the right field line. Into the arcade. Saw a couple of gloves go up. That's a feel good foul ball. Panic, little pop up to right field. This could be trouble. And coming in is Trumbo to make the catch. Just a little too much height. And here's Pagan. But those are the ones that guys running down the first baseline break out the, the get down song. Get down, get down, get down, get down, get down, get down. Jeremy Hellickson has the distinction of being only one of two pitchers in Major League history who won a rookie a gold glove in his rookie year. Yeah, usually that's a, an award won by reputation. And he won rookie of the year too. It's just a great way to get your career started. Breaking ball to Pagan who had a sacrifice fly. In the first inning. You're going to win the Gold Glove Award, your Rookie of the Year. 
or your rookie year, you have to be amazing. Yeah, really. So they're telling us he wanted his second year. Hey, Williams and Posey are here. They're out the bleachers. There's a strike. Two balls and one strike. Five one D backs here in the third inning. Look out. Off of Hellickson. And Pagan is out. That's a rough at bat right there. 5 1 D backs. Championship ring. He said, "For everybody else around here, it's kind of old news. They know how to handle it." But I'm really excited. And yes, he was. This is when he was introduced to pick up his ring. And, uh, he's taking it all in. Here's Hellickson. He takes a strike. Giants had the the gold unis yesterday with the. Giants logo across their chest in gold. Kind of one game wonders, huh? That's it. Today, back to the regular creams. Helixson gone. He's not limping. He took a pretty good shot. Hey, you'll exchange a bruise for an out any day of the week. Not a problem. Here's Plus, just looking at Helixson, I bet he's a good bruiser. Yeah, I bet you're right. So here's Inciarte, who's bounced out twice. Here's a strike call. Guys that were good bruisers are always entertaining. Get a bruise on their side. Guys that walk by them with their shirt off and go, "Hey, what's that on your side?" And put their finger right on the bruise. And keep that bruise around for a while. McGee's got it on one hop. All right, let's check in with Amy G. All right, guys. Well, about 5,000 kids this morning had what my seven-year-old daughter would describe as the best day ever. Pony League Day here at AT&T Park, and our own Mike Kruko was the MC. They got to have a Q&A with the likes of George Contos, Eli Whiteside, and Chris Heston. They come from all over the Bay Area. They got to do a little parade on the field. And my favorite part is the questions that are asked. So Eli told me he was asked, 
What do you do when you think it's a strike and the ump thinks it's a ball? And George Conto said he was asked, have you ever tried to intentionally hit a batter? They both said, um, took a little while to answer that one. Guys? No, you, you can't oh. fib to kids. Come on. Well, he's got to make up something. All of a sudden got better because then I didn't want to run. My old it was a good group, and there were some great questions the kids had asked today. We had uh, Eli Whiteside, George Contos, and Chris Heston were our guests today. And kids really is what makes this sport go. It's 0-2 to Pollock, who is 2-for-2 two two today. See Hudson, Hudson a little frustrated at, well, not just necessarily Pollock, but just spoiling off really good pitches. He knows he's only got so many in the arm today. He's got 65 pitches thrown already. The faithful. Well, they like to do sponge fingers with the three rings on the three fingers. Hudson says, all right, I'm going to change the sight lines. It's one and two. Yeah, there's so a lot of them. But they are pretty cool. I mean, I'm not a big sponge finger guy. But those are cool. <laughs> yeah, those are cool. It makes me laugh. Out of play. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, fourth inning. Giants trail by four. Slowly hit. And Pollock's going to beat this out. So now Hudson's got to pitch to Goldsmith out of the stretch. Yeah, and, and now all of a sudden the inning becomes stressful and more pitches. Next pitch for Hudson is number 70. By the end of the fourth inning, you want to be 60 or less. So you get an idea of how many extra throws he's had to throw, but a lot of time in the stretch now. Just not going to have an easy one, two, three inning today. Oh, and one to Goldschmidt. Hudson got in front of Goldschmidt, oh, and two in the third inning, and then Goldschmidt ended up taking a walk. There we go. That's all we needed. In the cable car out in right center. Runs that one inside, one ball and one strike. Thing that the Diamondbacks have not done yet. They have not tested Brandon Belt in left field, making his first start in the outfield today. Pollock. We saw him. He runs well. Does have one steal on the year. You're going to miss one and two. I tell you what, that is a compact, powerful swing. It really is. And it's the same swing. 0-2-2-0. I mean, it's it just is. tight. And it's lethal. There is some TNT in this bat head. And he really lets that ball get deep to you. 
That might be as good a swing as you're going to get. When you can combine average and power, I mean, that, that's what separates you from the herd. If five home runs, 15 RBIs, and he's hit 326 coming into this at bat. Two and two. Hit a home run in the first inning off of Hudson. Pollock goes, struck him out swinging. Posey, Belt, McGee coming up. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of San Francisco Baseball Associates, LLC. Well, the Giants get a day out tomorrow after 14 straight games. Then on Tuesday, the Dodgers make their first visit to San Francisco. And Tuesday, Wednesday games are both 7-15 starts. And then Thursday is a day game in the city, a 12-45 start. You need tickets? Go to sfgiants.com slash tickets. We'll Re be here. Renew the rivalry. Tim Litzko will take on Brett Anderson in game one of that series. And then Madison Bumgarner, Clayton Kershaw in game two. Wednesday night. What's the big deal about that one? I, 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 I don't know. Huh. One and zero to Buster Posey. Get into a double play. His first at bat. Posey digs this one out down the left field line, and that's a foul ball. How foul was it? Yeah, a yard. Foul enough where you could tell it was foul. Yeah. Easy call for third base umpire Lance Barrett today. Wind today, blustery wind. Down low, two balls in one strike. Giants need a couple of base runners. And it's three and one. 
Now this should be a strike here with a four run lead. Hellickson opens up an inning with a walk. That's a big mistake. So Posey should get something to hit. Up the middle. On the backhand. And they got him. Unbelievable. Helix had just got a piece of it. That's what you're trained to do. Just slow it down with the hopes that a middle infielder can catch up to it. And Owings does a fine job of getting set up and getting a quick throw off. And the middle infielder, any infielder, really, if you're going to throw it, throw it down low, give your first baseman a chance. And Posey can just not leg it out. Here's Bell. Frustrating at bat. Well, frustrating. Foul by a foot, and then that. Belt fouls it out of play. These guys trying to figure out a cheer here. They're working on it. No balls in one strike. Belt with a base hit in the second inning. One and two. Good change up. I think we've seen more change ups and off speed pitches in this series than I've ever seen. Ever. One and two to belt. Two and two to belt. Overshift is on once again for belt. And a full count. So try to nibble a little off speed on the outside corner. And now Belt gets a count where it's a get it in situation. And Belt's got another hit. And McGee's coming up. Well, he slows it down. Oh, he caroms off his girlfriend. Yeah, we feel you. That is frustrating. But the good news is his girlfriend's okay. Still a long night for that guy. Say, dude, I could have had the ball instead. I got a bruise. Or next time, let me catch it. <laughs> she gave her bed. She made the play. McGee bounced into a 6 4 3 double play in the second inning. <laughs> 2 and 0. McGee showed the other night that he has the ability to just punch one to the right side. And we also saw in Arizona he has the ability to hit a one iron over the wall in left field. Deep set defensively, pretty much straight away. Two zero changeup. Yep, did not go after him with a fastball. 
I asked him. I said, have you ever seen so many changeups in your life? He goes, unbelievable. High to left field. Enciarte is going to make the catch. Two outs. I think they got up his bat just a little bit. Two seamer. And it did. It just got off the sweet spot. So he takes the walk back of the dugout thinking I just missed it. So here's Susak. And Susak it's a high fly ball straight away center field. Waiting on it is Pollock and that'll end the inning. Through four here at AT&T Park it remains 5-1 D-Bet. Was outstanding last night, going seven and two thirds, only allowing one run, while striking out six Diamondbacks in a four to one victory. And he's been fantastic in all three of his starts. Here's Trumbo. Trumbo bounces it foul. Well, take a look at the numbers seven and two thirds, five hits, one earning, six strikeouts, 112 pitches. First Giants start of the season to record an outing in the seventh inning. First Giants rookie since 1914 to begin the season with three starts of at least six innings and one or fewer earned runs. So, how good was he? Well, historically good. And what a tremendous shot in the arm that to give to this Giants rotation. And what it all amounts to yesterday was it was just a big league stop job. They needed it bad. And an eight game losing streak coming into that game. And he stood tall and dealt. Big chopper to Crawford. Yep. You want some ice cream? That's where you go. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. Two thumbs up. It's the line that never gets small. Just wait it out. It'll be worth it. Here's Hill. 
He'll shoot some up the middle. Crawford got it to his left. Two out. And a one pitch out. And that's exactly what Hudson needs. So here's Pacheco. Hudson hit Pacheco with the bases loaded in the third inning. Yeah, that runs inside, one ball and no strikes. Strike to Pacheco, who also bounced out to Crawford in the second. Hudson's due to hit second in the bottom of this inning. Check swing, one and two. Hitters hate that. Pitchers love it. That's one of the things that separates pitchers and hitters. The emotions on a check swing strike. Got him, and that'll end the inning. Eight pitch inning for Hudson. Crawford, Hudson, and Aoki coming up. Bay Area is brought to you by the Solar Company. Not just any solar company. The Solar Company. Switch to solar and save. Well, music fans, check out the Giants Music Series 3-pack offers. It includes Meca Metallica Day on Saturday, May 2nd. To check on info for more information on the 3-packs, go to sfgiants.com slash minipack. Here's Crawford. Crawford drew a walk in the second. Hudson's coming out of the game because Duffy's on deck. George Contos warming up the Giants bullpen. And. Boy, that's a gift. One ball and one strike. Yeah, it's a low strike. But you're going to see low gifts, or you're not going to see high gifts with Sonia.
He's taking that 1 0 fastball. And that's just a pitcher strike. It's a ball. So what could have been a 2 0 count, it's a 1 1 count. Definitely changes the at bat. Crawford taps it foul off his foot. Now it's 2 and 2. But it's part of it. I mean, players make mistakes. You just have to get by it. But those are little things that can affect you. They can take away your your concentration. If you let your emotions start to get away, and you really have to keep those in check. For every one that goes against you, you're going to get a pitch that's on the corner that will go your way. You know, it does even out. Although at times it doesn't seem like it. On the ground. On the backhand is Hill. And his throw is not in time. Crawford had a pretty good jump out of the box when he hit that ball the other way. Well, and Hill was kind of playing off the line. He really had to go hard to his right. And then he had to fight to get his feet beneath him. And as it was, it was an off balance throw, just not enough on the throw, and allowed Crawford a chance to beat it out. So the Giants get the leadoff hitter on. And here's Duffy. Duffy hitting at 290. And he takes a strike and it's 0 and 1. Another low strike. He set that target inside and that thing came across and played the other side. Played. Sonia's not telling Bruce Bochy to stop. So I don't want to hear about it anymore. Once an umpire takes the mask off, I mean, that's your warning. Why wouldn't you keep throwing it there? Uh, absolutely. We saw the low strike to Crawford. Here's the low strike to Duffy. And that's why Bochi is upset about it. Plus, when it was received by Pacheco, he kind of pancaked it down and he made it look worse. And for Bochi, an old catcher, I mean, he doesn't think you should reward the wrong guy. So Helix is no fool. Two other times he's going back down below. And he's going to do it again. See the label on the glove, the gold Rollins glove. You get those when you win a gold glove. Three and one. Aoki on deck. Helixson. Nibble, nibble, nibble. And he's trying to get that ground ball, and he's just pounding the low with sink. Duffy, to his credit, has been able to lay off. Three and one. On the ground to third. That's one. That's two. So Hellickson does indeed get that double play. All right, let's check in with Amy G. All right, guys, you were saying what a great job Chris Heston did. Well, Bruce Bochy agrees with you. Not only does he think he has good stuff, but what concentration every start he's had, all three have been in big situations. He had a start in the open opening series. He started the home opener, and of course he started the ring ceremony. Boch said the concentration and the focus is unmatched, and he does not get caught up in what he said is the hoopla. 
guys. Yeah, he's pretty steady. He doesn't get too high or get too low. And we have been knee deep in the hoopla. There's a strike to Aoki. Third double play the Giants have have hit into. Two of the three have been after the leadoff hitter reached. Look at it. That get him? No. Close. And then he takes his legs out right underneath him. Well, if your intent was to move his feet, you succeeded. Shows a little disgust in the strike call, thinking it was low and inside. Aoki trying to get on for panic. And it's two and two. It all started with two outs and two strikes. Two balls, two strikes. Get out into right center field. On the move is Trumbo. He's not going to get it. Oh, he might have it inside the park home run. Well, maybe not. It is a triple. And it is energy. And boy, do they need it right now. So a nice two out, two strikes swing of the bat from Aoki, who continues to really have a nice start. Middle end, away from the intended location, and he just jumps on it. So, I mean, I think hitters that get knocked down in their at bat to come up big with an extra base hit in the same at bat, they like that. And so do the Giants fans. You can run a little bit. Here's panic. Panic is singled and he's popped out. And it's wide, one ball and no strikes. This will be pitch number 70 coming up. This game is frustrating. Oh. Still test you.
night during the ring ceremony are now available at any one of our 10 Bay Area dugout store locations. The dugout store locations have the largest selection of gold player jerseys. So check it out. When it's time for a change, think Speedy Oil Change and Auto Service. Your oil change tune up and brake experts. George Contos coming in for the seventh time, having a good start to a season. 1 0 with a 1 0 4 ERA. Seven strikeouts against one walk. Here's Chris Owings. Bottom three in this lineup. Owings has two hits. He and Goldschmidt have the big hits in this game. There's a strike. Goldschmidt's left the park. Owings was an 0-2 base hit that knocked in a pair. Well, and I think that's what's going to be frustrating for Tim Hudson. I mean, he threw the ball well today. He had uh, the swing of the bat that cost him two runs to Goldschmidt. And he was heading the count. And then with Owings, with the bases loaded, he had a 0-2. And uh, Owings got a fastball that was out over the plate. At the belt, he went to right field with it. So two times he got beat when he was ahead in the count. And for a veteran like Hudson, I mean, he's not going to be happy with that. But stuff wise, I mean, he, he threw the ball well. Angel Pagan out in right center field will backpedal and put it away. So two location mistakes cost you two runs with each swing of the bat. And that really has been the difference in this game. There's the Ruby. The Giants flags flying. Here's Nick Ahmed who struck out twice against Hudson. I kind of like to be on that boat. Looks like they're having fun. Get on the ground to Crawford. And that's a 6 3 foot out. And here's Hellickson. George Cantos thrown with as much confidence as we've ever seen him have at this level. I mean, he looks like he is in total command. He's got some new weapons. He's learned how to use them. Hellickson high and foul down the right field line and out of play. Yeah, it does look. Rather relaxing out on that boat. The Ruby. Get on the ground to panic. And Joe Panic will make the play. Seven pitches. And now the Giants will have Pagan Posey and Belt coming up.
is brought to you by Heffernan Insurance Brokers. Insurance and financial services for you and your business. Visit HeffINS.com and by Xfinity, home of the most live sports. A 5-1 to one lead for the D-back. Here's our McDonald's two stories on this date in 2013. In the bottom of the ninth, Angel Pagan with a walk-off winning double to right field. Hit off the wall off of Padres reliever Luke Gregerson and scored Andres Torres and the Giants won three to two. Was that that was an odd year, right? 2013, yeah. Yeah, it was. Yeah. So Pagan comes up. Pagan is 0 for 1. He had a bullet off of Hellickson that ricocheted out to the second baseman Owings and Owings threw him out and then Posey let off the next inning and did the same thing. There's a pitch down low we should find out ask our stats guy Mike Scardino how many times that's happened a one four three back to back in the history of baseball he'll do. Roll foul, one ball and one strike. Diamondbacks are getting some action, or at least people are walking down to the bullpen. That's action. That was a good look at this sellout crowd. Well, just wait for a few more runs to get lit up about. Chafin, the left hander. Andrew Chafin, get heated up. Good hands Billy Hayes knocks it down it's one and two. He did have good hands. Billy Hayes is one of our rookies. He was a former first round pick by the Cubs. And I was there when he got called up and. He was sweet with the glove. The very first day we ever saw him. And he never lost it. Still catches a good pin. Pagan on the ground is short. Pagan's retired, one out. The only thing about Billy Hayes now, if he catches that bullpen, he's got to do it standing up. Hands are still good. Hands are good. Knees, not so. Here's Buster Posey. Belt on deck. Swing and a miss. Take another guy who had sweet hands was Boach. Bruce Boach, yeah. he was good to throw to. Talked to all his old teammates that were pitchers that threw to him. They raved about it. Posey, it's a high fly ball to right. Trumbo moving over, and this one's going to drift into the seats. It's 0 and 2. We have a winner. Usually, the fly balls that get hit down the right field line have a tendency to push back into play. That one looked like it was pushing the other way. The wind today is swirling. You really can't read it by what you see with the flags. Not a real indication as to which way it's carrying the outfield. On the ground, more work for Nick Ahmed. Posey's retired. And that'll bring it Brandon Belt, who's two for two. There's three Giants fans. Yeah, they play for the Seals. Play for the Seals, you lose your teeth. I mean, that's what it looks like. It sure does.
Here's Belt. Now Bell yesterday was hit no 77. He was on the bingo card. A one for three night last night with a walk. And a hit in his first at bat today. Well, actually, the first two at bats. Now he's hit 161. So now he needs to get off the interstate. And that's foul. The ball is chasing CB Buckner. Just pick it on you, CB. <laughs> and that would have been the ultimate ugly finder. Umpires do not like to draw attention to themselves, and if they can't get out of the way of a foul line drive like that, they would hear it for both dugouts. Belt stays alive. Nachos in a helmet. What could be better than that? Well, that sounds pretty good right now, as a matter of fact. Yeah, you just didn't like your eggs this morning, that's all. <laughs> I know, I was sitting next to you. Or was it me that didn't like the eggs? <laughs> I think it was mutual. <laughs> Giants need a bloop and a blast. They need to ding that scoreboard up a little bit. We got one run. Back in the first, we thought, all right, here we go. And that has been it. Hellickson has held him. Check. It's good 0-2 pitch right there. It's exactly where he wanted to put that thing. Trying to get this crowd into the game. And right now you do it one way. Offense. And he gets belt. To end the inning. Through six. 5-1 Arizona. By your local Toyota dealer. Hellickson is scattered seven hits. Hudson got tagged for a home run by Goldschmidt, and Oki's had a double and a triple. So Cantos now to face Inciarte, the leadoff hitter, and he takes a call strike.
and that's to the back foot of Inciarte, who's bounced out three times. The damage that was done in the third inning is really the difference in this game. And Inciarte let off that inning with a ground ball back to the pitcher. Here he shoots this one foul. Heads up down there. We all right? Yeah, we're good. So the little ones are okay. Some of the ones we worry about first. And that's pulled down to our ball dude who had no chance. <laughs> well, he didn't. Tony Graham over there on the first base side. See that one coming. Tony. Gotta work on his socks a little bit. He's got a, a pant blowout on the left side. All right, here we go. I got this one. He, 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 look out, Tony. And Ciarte spoils a fastball in. Now, right, one more look. He, he. Now, those caroms are not fair. No, they're not. But. You know, you, you can't have one leg up and one flap down. We need a little more symmetry in the way you wear your uni, Tony. Out of play. On deck is Pollock. And it's tapped to back to Contos, who makes a nice play. What on? All right, let's check in with Amy G. All right, Dwayne, I did my very best today to get some good scoop on your partner, Mike Kruko. I went to his former Giants teammate and yours and current Arizona Diamondbacks broadcaster, Bob Friendly. I said, Bob, talk to me about Mike. What do you got? All good news. He said he's the best teammate he's ever played with. Had a burning desire to win every single game, whether he was pitching or not. And Mike, he said, with your attitude, your teammates would jump through flaming hoops to be with you. I want to be on Mike's team. I kind of am. Guys. <laughs> you got really good information, Amy, and all of that is very true. I thought I ranked a little higher in the te favorite teammate department. Well, you just don't say a bad word about that guy around me. I have to fight you. Here's Pollock, who this check swing goes right behind Goldschmidt. And uh, it was, I mean, it was a time, you know, he went through the years, and you were there, 83, 4, and 5, that were not good years, I mean, losing seasons. And then when we resurrected in, with Roger. Craig and Al Rosen in 86 and then go to the playoffs in 87. We went for the first time and then to the World Series in 89. It was just a great time to be part of that. I mean, you get close to your teammates when you go through those times. But Bob Brindley was just one of those guys that you, you look forward coming to the ballpark to, to strap it on with. Plus, he was entertaining. Very entertaining. Still is. Two and two, not a Pollock. Giants have the day off tomorrow, their first one of the season. That's going to feel like a week off. The Diamondbacks have a day off tomorrow as well. Pollock hit this one on the ground to Buster Posey. Two outs. Hey, the, the shift worked. It did. Posey playing well off the bag. I mean, if he plays straight up first base, 
I mean, that's a ball punch through the hole. See where he is on the right side. That's way over there. He didn't have to move. This will be the second day off for the D backs. They had one right after the Giants left town the opening week of the season. His Goldsmith takes a strike. The D backs play Texas on Tuesday and Wednesday, and then they have another day off. Well, the Giants get caught up day off wise in June. Most of baseball has one, maybe two. The Giants have four days off in June. One and two to Goldschmidt. But it, it is unusual to see 14 straight games at the start of a year because physically, I mean, you're really not in a position coming out of spring training to do that. That's why you need a day off. Days off in the, on the East Coast. There because of weather problems you might have. Right to Posey and that'll end the inning. So the Giants have work to do. They got nine more outs in this game. And McGee's going to lead things off. Back. All right, time now for our Ford Ride Choice. And we go back to yesterday's ring ceremony. They delivered the rings by land and even by air. You can watch the parachutists land inside AT&T Park with such precision, holding their precious cargo. And their precious cargo were they brought down the rings for Brian Sabian and for Bruce Bochy. That was the coolest one right there. That was the one. I mean, those guys are amazing. And here they bring in Sabian and Bochy's rings. I don't think that's what you said to me today. You said they're nuts. Well, they are nuts. <laughs> but they're accurate. Well, we kept thinking they were going to hit the, the light towers. I mean, you know, you're dropping into a hole, basically. Well, about a week ago in San Diego, we saw the skydivers come in, and they came in a little softer because there was a lot of more wind here, and they came in hot. Now that was spectacular. What a concept. Baseball by the bay. It was awesome. So here's McGee he's hit into a double play and he's hit a fly ball to deep left field. And he 
takes a strike. Brad Ziegler's in the bullpen. And McGee pulls it foul, so it's nothing and two. Nabigee's got a battle. Taps it to short. Ahmed will throw him out. McGee 0 for 3. Let's right, say hey Tuesday, Giants and Dodgers. Yahoo Sports Talk live from the plaza at 5, per game live at 6.30. And then we'll have the game for you at the top of the hour. Here's Susak. I think Amy misses that age. I think most moms do. That's a good age. Susak, single in the second, hit a fly ball to center field in the fourth. Helixson now so better than he did in the first four innings of the game. Well, he really is. See Brad Ziegler get stretched out in the D backs bullpen and Chimachi heating up in the Giants pen. Susak out swinging. Only the second strikeout for Helixson. And here's Crawford. Crawford has walked and he's picked up an infield hit. And here he lines this one over Ahmed. Well, he's definitely climbing out of his slump, no doubt. Got a little get it in first pitch fastball and just jumps on it, but not trying to do much. I mean, just going with the movement. That thing's got a little tail that's running away at the belt. Tries and pulls it. The ground ball to the second baseman here. He stays inside and gets himself another knock, and that's going to be the last pitch that Helixson throws. When it's time for a change, think speedy oil change and auto service. Your oil change tune up and brake experts. We'll be back.
Live on Comcast Sports Net Bay Area coverage starts at 6.30. It is the authentic home of the Warriors playoff. Yes, it is. So Ziegler's the new pitcher. Blanco is the hitter. Brad Ziegler, and this is what he has done in five games. He's been perfect. He's allowed one hit, one base runner in four and two thirds innings with three strikeouts. Sinker slider changeup. And boy, is he off to a great start. Submarine style pitcher. Way outside to Blanco. One ball and no strikes. Giants right now just trying to move the line. You cannot hit a four run home run right here. There's a strike to even the count. One and two. Blanco on the ground up the middle. And that'll end the inning. Four six on the put out through seven. It stays five one. Be back. I got the email, Mike. Area.com as insider Alex Pavlovich provides wire to wire reporting of the Giants 2015 season. You get breaking news, videos, special features, and much, much more. You see it only on CSNBayArea.com. Five one Arizona. When it's time for a change, thing speedy oil change and auto service. Your oil change tune up and brake experts. Chi Machi, the new pitcher now for the Giants. Seven base runners allowed six innings. That's, that's dealing it. When you're averaging one base runner or a little bit above per inning, that's that's doing it. Here's Trumbo. Trumbo sharply on the ground. Crawford to his left. One out. 
if you see enough fast infields, do you get used to it? Well, I, you know what I think, Mike. I think sometimes the problem is, is if you're used to a slow infield in the park that you play in, that's what's hard to get used to. And now, I'm look, the Giants are used to it by now. Think about this infield is. Even though it might be fast, it's still true. The infield in Arizona. Forget it. Yeah, we did see a lot of really explosive bounces coming up on infielders for both teams in, in Arizona. Yeah, these guys still have a lot of fun. Here's the one one and he'll bounces it foul. Nice play. See he brought his glove. Gave his ball to his girl. Life is good. Life is good. One ball and two strikes. And it's a bit outside two and two. I was taking a look at the play we're talking about. Gobbles it up. A little low in the pocket still. Got her dead. Three balls, two strikes. Got him. All right, let's take a look at strike three. And I'm sure Aaron Hill thought that ball was in, so. As I said, the corners can breathe. They can inhale and be very tight. They can exhale and be very generous at times with Dan and Sonia. That time, they were generous. Look out. Up and in. One ball and no strikes. Crawford more work on the back end and he will get it to Posey and a nice inning for Machi. Six more outs for the Giants and they'll have the top of the order coming up.
Giants post game live highlights reaction analysis it's all coming up. So it'll be Nori Aoki to face Brad Ziegler. Aoki panic Pagan Posey belt and McGee all coming up here in the eighth. And there's a strike at the knees and it's all in one. Well I hope you're right. Well you just. That would be entertaining. It would be entertaining. Tap to first. And on the second pitch of the inning. Aoki is out. Peralta is now in left. And Ciarte is in right. And here's Joe Panic. He's had a good day swinging the bat. I mean, the stats say one for three, but two of his at bats have really been balls that he hit right on the button. And that's really all you could do is hit it hard. There's a pitch at the knees for a strike. Panic on the ground to second. Two outs. Ziggler will one of those guys where you walk back and you go, this guy's killing me. <laughs> well. Yeah, he, a lot of guys say that, and we mentioned it, it, it for the time of start he's had to his 2015 season. I mean, he's been on fire. There's only been one hit allowed by Ziegler. Big chopper. You know what Pagan's saying? This guy's killing me. <laughs> A six pitch three ground ball inning and we'll head to the ninth. Get highlights and reactions from this game. A preview of the Warriors Pelicans game tomorrow in NBA highlights. Here's Chris Owings.
Oh, and one to Owings. Hudson made one bad pitch to Owings, and it cost him two runs. And he'll be thinking about that as well. It was an 0 2 fastball out over the plate. Way ahead to count. But to Owens' credit, I mean, he didn't try to do too much with it. He launched it right into right field. He's a good at bat. One ball and one strike. Belt over his head. And Owings with his third hit. That was not one Belt could catch, by the way. No, I don't know if there was anybody in this Giants team that could have got that one. That was a bullet line drive. I mean, that's the only chance that Belt has had today in left field. So he's thinking, well, this is easy to play out here. You just wait till it stops rolling and pick it up. <laughs> so here's Nick Ahmed, who's 0 for 3. Hey, break up the Mets. That's Met off to a great start. Yeah, they won again today. They won their eighth straight. They're ten and three. There's Ahmed with a bunt, and Machi is going to flip to McGee, and they got him. That's a great play. And McGee may have gotten spiked. I mean, for Machi, the, the beauty of this, of watch how he gets unwound, it gets over to his right to a bare hand, and then just a little flip, perfect to. McGee, who gets indeed he does get spiked his right foot like he. That's an it. athletic move by Machi. Well, Machi can do a lot of things that amaze you. And we've seen him do this before. He's very quick off the mound, but I'm just impressed how a right-hander who has his momentum going towards the first base line can get unwound and can get over there so quickly to the right side or to the left side of the infield, the third base side, and then make a great barehanded play. Here's Yasmani Tomas. He is pinch hitting for Ziegler. Affelt's in the bullpen. Affelt might be there to face Inciarte, who's on deck. Out of play. Tomas is a guy that likes to swing. Yeah, he got up there to take. What we saw from Tomas in spring training was he has a lot of balls in right field. Edison Reed, the closer for the D backs, getting heated up. By the way, Mike, the Mets are now 7 0 at home this year. Miami, who took the loss, is now 3 and 10. Brewers, two and ten. Had him leaning, not in time. That's a play you can appeal. And Buster Posey may be signifying over to Bruce Boat. You might want to take a look at this one. There's a little bit of a lean to the bag. If he got him the first time, he's out. He might have. I guarantee the Giants are looking at it. And they will pass. Shot happened to the Giants. I think if he got him, it wasn't obvious enough to overturn the call. And I don't think they got him. I think he was safe. The Giants had uh, a play overturned on them in San Diego. Now the runner goes, and it's hit right where panic was. So Ahmed's going to move over to third. 
So just like you said, Mike, he goes to right field. Tomas, that's his first major league hit. So Affelt is going to come in. When it's time for a change, think Speedy Oil Change and Auto Service, your oil change tune up and brake experts. We'll be back. New pitcher now for the Giants is Jeremy Athel, 16 that he's come into. 0 and 1 with a 2.70 ERA. Ian Harris, a first and third situation with one out. And with the speed of Inciarte, this is not a, a double play situation for Athel, who has a good sinker. He gets a lot of ground balls, but Inciarte is very difficult to double up. Giants are going to play a double play depth in the middle of the infield. But I think in the mind of Athel, he's thinking strikeout. And the first pitch is down low. Normally, with a guy who has average speed, you pitch for the ground ball early and the strikeout late. But in Ciarte, because of his speed and because he is difficult to double up, that's going to slice foul. On the ground could be a pair. Instead, Crawford's going to come home. And McGee tags him out. Well, that was exciting. Well, it just gives you an idea of what was going on in the mind of Crawford. Thinking, all right, I mean, that, that's a double play ball, but again, the speed of Inciarte takes it away, so he's got to get that out. They can't give up another run. But I think Owens does a great job of prolonging the rundown, which allows everybody, or Nick Ahmed rather, allows everybody to move up into scoring position. So that's your job. If you get hung up as a base runner, stay as live as long, alive as long as you can. So here's Pollock. Pollock hits one up the middle, and that's going to end the inning. So nice job by Affeld. Last chance for the Giants. Posey's going to lead it off.
brought to you by Honda. And we get the starting pitcher for the Diamondbacks today. Jeremy Hellickson is worthy of that distinction. For Hellickson, he goes six and two thirds strong, allowing just one run. Didn't strike out a lot of people, but mixed his pitches well and got great support from his defense. And he is three outs away from his first National League win. And he is our player of the game, brought to you by Honda. When it's time for a change, think speedy oil change and auto service. Your oil change tune up and brake experts. Addison Reed, the closer now for Arizona, coming in to try and close this one out. Reed, a low 90s fastball and a really good slider. Basically a two pitch guy. Facing Buster Posey. Two balls and no strikes. Giants will take a couple of free passes. Three and oh. Absolutely. It's all about base runners right now. And Reed comes back in with a 3 0 strike. So Posey taking 3 0. I doubt he'll be taking 3 1 if it's a good pitch to hit. Posey pops it up. And Enciarte in foul territory puts it away. So Reed comes back to get Buster Posey. And with one out, here's Belt. Belt is two for three. The rocket boat heading out. Wear a warm jacket when you get on that thing. Absolutely. Belt shoots it foul. It's no balls in one strike. Inside to Brandon Belt. You know, Reese got just enough sling to his delivery, where it, it, it's just the right amount of funkiness. It kind of is deceptive in the way that it gets on you. Falls behind one and two. Ninety three from Addison Reed. It's two and two. Casey McGee to follow. Big sweeping slider. Not that easy to take when you 
hitting off in a, in a two strike situation. Got him. Fastball away at 93. And Belt strikes out for the second time today. So here's McGee. And the last chance for the Giants. McGee is 0 for 3. McGee trying to get on for Susat. This should do it. In foul territory is Hill. And Hill makes the catch, and that's the ball game. So the final game in this four-game series goes to the D-backs. They take three out of four from the Giants. And now the Giants will enjoy a day off and take on the Dodgers on Tuesday. Well, the day off could not come at a better time. They've weathered the storm and they've gone through 14 in a row, but very frustrating weekend uh, going down uh, to the to the uh, deep backs and losing three of the four. So, you know, they know they have to play better, especially with Los Angeles coming to town on Tuesday. And the Giants will face a couple of lefties right out of the gate. Anderson and I don't know, a guy by the name of Kershaw. All right. Final score. The Diamondbacks five and the Giants one. Thanks for joining us. Stay tuned. Insurance Giants post game live with interviews on the wrap starts right now.